part two with Mike Muldoon here. Uh, turns out we're the same age. I didn't even know that, but I hope you caught the first one that we did leading up to the 350 Smack Tour race up at Evans Mills. This one, we're going to go a little bit different uh, places because I, 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 I wrote some notes down on the first interview that we did, and I said, man, I'd like to explore some other parts of that, so that's what we're going to do in this one. We're out in Bowensville today, Mike Muldoon. That's uh, the Isma car behind him that his son will drive uh, at least three times this year, maybe more. How we doing, man? Good, good, great. So when you look back, I mean, I didn't, I mean, I'd heard your name for a long time. I didn't know a lot about this, that your, your dad raced, your brother, Sean, won a championship in one of your extra two championships in one of your cars. Um, let's go all the way back, because you told me your dad ran 68 to 85, but he never won. What, you didn't say there was a particular reason why. No, he never really had a good car under him. And, you know, every time somebody came along with a car and off from a drive, he was just happy with six kids and the family. He just took whatever he could get, and he wasn't like like me. I said to myself, if I don't feel I can win, I won't go to the track. But him, he was just, if he could participate, he was happy. Mm -hmm. And he just never never had the money, never, you know, not that he didn't have the knowledge. He had the knowledge, and he was a good mechanic, but uh, just never had the chance to really uh, showcase. His, and by the time he got 35, 40 years old, he had arthritis so bad he couldn't hardly walk. Really? So okay. that kind of put a big damper on his career. Yeah, and, and of course, Mike is the second oldest in the family. I often wonder about that era because, like you said, it, and it's different than today because we didn't have any chassis builders back then really, did no. they? Right? No, you did all your own. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably why Champagne was so far ahead of everybody. And, you know, Swifty with Bill Wright was with them. I mean, they just two, two guys that were just ahead of uh, their era. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just that's how it was. I wonder, though, how... Maybe some of these guys that we might not necessarily think about might have been better drivers than we think because maybe their equipment was not what some other people was. Is that a fair thing to think? Nah, I would say that's pretty fair. I mean, uh, I would say there's probably, you know, growing up, I know there was a lot of great drivers in a swiggle that just never had, I mean, great cars. And, and great, great cars make great drivers. And you won't know if you're a great driver if you don't have a great car. Nice. What was that like for you as the young son? Because obviously you wanted your dad to win. You worked on the car with him. It, was it tough or was it well, something Well, when you I first started, I, I mean, I, I, by the time I had three years under my belt, I knew I was, I, I was, I was capable of winning, but I didn't have a motor or, or anything. So, I mean, I, I, me and Jimmy Isaac decided we'd sit out a year before I went up there to run around in fifth place. And that's exactly what we did. Sold the car and said we're not going to race. So you might have learned that lesson to some degree from your dad, right? Oh, I learned it real hard. Yeah. I just, well, I'm not here to participate. I'm here to win. And if I don't feel I can win, I'm not going. Of course, there are really two kinds of racers. There's a lot of people who are going to suit up this weekend, whether it's dirt here in central New York or, or even on the cup tour or something that have never won, maybe don't have what they need right now. What, what motivates a driver in that position, do you think? they're always hoping that somebody comes along, gives them that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if you quit, you, nobody knows who you are. Yeah, because I've seen that meme on Facebook, right? It's whether yep. to quit or whether to work harder. It's, yep. it's yeah. tough, isn't it? And it's, hard to beat, it's hard to beat somebody with better equipment and more money. Mm -hmm. But if you quit, nobody knows who you are, and, and you're pretty much done. Speaking of quitting, sounds like you might have had some thoughts of quitting after your first night. When was this again? The, the first time uh, you came out? My first night 83? was in, in yeah, 98, nine, uh, 1983. I mean, I ended up uh, hitting the front strider wall and getting knocked out, but... I knew at that point that that, that wasn't going to slow me down. Did you go to the hospital or anything? Oh, yeah. First night I got knocked out, but, I mean, I was okay the next day. Just, okay. you know, concussion, but we came back the next week. Yeah, because 83, we didn't even, there was no concussion protocol. Uh, I mean, back then you were a lot tougher than you are today. Yeah, and if you threw up afterwards, you threw up afterwards. That's, just, that's just exactly what it was. Right? Yeah, that's how it was. <laughs> were there any, let's see, what were any, um, nerves or anything the next time no, you sat in the car no, beforehand after I that? No, I've never really ever had any nerves racing. Really? Not yeah. even after the crash that sent no, you to the hospital? No, just kind of more determined, really. Okay. I mean, I figured if you got nerves or you're worried about wrecking, you shouldn't be out there anyways. Good point. Okay. What about the car? Was the car trashed? No, I was wrecked, but, uh, I mean, I think it was next day, Jimmy Isaac was out the garage, and we fixed it, and we went back racing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, you didn't you mean he fixed it and you watched you fixed it with him right yeah, that's right that's right we always we were, was always a, a group of guys and i mean tom clark did my bodies he was out there you know he fixed it up everybody seemed to find time to you know we were all young and that's what we wanted to do was that more of a, a prerequisite for the job of race car driver in those eras maybe than it was that it is today being able to do stuff to be able to fabricate was it to take more skills back then do you think absolutely there was nobody there was nobody in business to fix it and nobody 
nobody would help you on your car. I mean, if you didn't figure it out, you weren't going to figure it out. It's that mm -hmm. simple. I mean, you could ask people, but pretty much it was a trial and error. Yeah. Yeah, and unlike today where I can go to Bicknell and get a front brake kit and I've got all the bolts and the nuts in there, you had to go to the hardware store and, yep, <laughs> and yeah, saw them you, off if you, you had, had to, You right? had to go buy steel and start laying the tubing down. Yeah, so talk about true creativity in the sport. I mean, is that maybe the, the golden age as we kind of look back at it now? I don't think you'll ever see that again. Yeah. It's just uh, everybody's made it too easy. I mean, you want a car, you, you call somebody and they make you a car. It's mm -hmm. that simple. I mean, and uh, that's why most people are buying used cars because they can't make them themselves. Yeah. It's good, though, isn't it? Because now I think it brings parity into it, does it not? Yeah, it does. I mean, uh, the, the, my, my smack car, I mean, we got 140 feet of tubing. I paid $3.90 or $4 a math, foot. Guys, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got $550 in tubing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I made my frame for less than 600 bucks. Why would I buy something when I can do it for 600 bucks? Of course, there is a shop rate involved, right? With the well, labor, I mean, right? I, got <laughs> I got hundreds of hours of my time in here. I mean, let's not get it wrong. I mean, mm -hmm. plus, you know you know, your, your heat and your light and your you yeah. know, argon and everything. But I mean, mm -hmm. cost wise, you can still build a frame for, you know, mm -hmm. Chrome Molly's double, but I mean, right. for a thousand dollars, you can still build a frame. Okay. He's got his phone go, but he just shut that off right there. So, so as we look at this, this ISMA car that's back behind us here, your son will be driving that this yep. year. How much do you think? Well, we're going to go and support uh, the three races at a swiggle. And uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to go to Michigan, maybe Jennerstown, and okay. beyond that, maybe Star Classic. And that's pretty much a full. I'm, I'm really concentrating on the Smack division this year because yeah. that, that was my goal. Is this? It, I mean, it, it looks like it's pretty similar. Is it? Yeah, the cars are all off the same jig. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can take my small block car and make it a big block car in a couple of days. Just like that. Okay. Just like that. Just okay. put a big block in it and slide the front end in it. Did you do much ISMA stuff back in the day? Um, I ran a few years in 93, 94, but not, you know, nothing, nothing a lot. You know, I mean, just I couldn't afford to, to travel, and I didn't have a really good program. Didn't have a big motor, and the time I figured it out and I got good at a swiggle, we, we didn't travel. Yeah, because guys have told me, and I'm curious what you think. They say the, the ISMA car, you do need a little bit more ponies under the hood yeah and i mean i i have a doug holmes motor now i mean it's nothing like what some of these guys are running short stroke and stuff but i feel that we have a, ca a capable motor of winning so you know we're going to do some isma racing this year okay i looked at some pictures you had in a wall of your dad's car and then the car that you drove with the previous aero style package on yep. the supers how has when did that change was it right around 2000 or something yeah somewhere around that? 2000 clyde showed up with some wings on the back and the rest is history I mean, what? it's. Uh, I'd like to see them go back to what they had back then and slow the cars down and put the driver back at, back behind the wheel instead of, uh, you know, right now you can pretty much just uh, flat foot it coming off the corner. You couldn't do that with those cars, and I think there was a lot better racing, but, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, what, what's my opinion? Well, some guys say that back then you could see the guy wiggling and you knew when yeah. you could get him, right? Yeah, they, you know, the tires started loosening yes. up and you could wear them down, but mm -hmm. that's not the case now, and now they're they're planted and, People are making uh, moves at, you know, dive bombing cars. And before you know it, you got a lot of wrecks, and a lot of wreck equipment. And I don't know. I don't have all the answers, but I know right. if, if I owned a track, I would go back to that. And I think you'd, uh, you'd get more cars and more people. Mm -hmm. How many times has Michael done this? It's my stuff. Um, he's, he's, you know, he's been racing for a few years on the ISMA circuit. Okay, but so he has some experience. Yeah, he's got he's got some races under okay. his belt. We're going to see this car in victory lane, do you think, this year? Uh, well, that's a tough deal, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. But, I mean, anything's possible. I think we've got a car capable of winning, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've you know, you got to make a good draw there. I mean, you know, you got you got 12, 15 guys that are capable of winning in ISMA. That's why I like running ISMA. i got about a minute left, maybe even just under. What do you want to get done before you call it a career? I don't know. I just... I guess just to see my son, uh, you know, have fun and mm -hmm. maybe get a couple of big wins. And, you know, other than that, I mean, I've pretty much accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. I'm just doing it for him. Mm -hmm. And the day that he don't want to race, we'll probably clean the shop out here and move to Florida and do something different. Or get some hot rods or something. So Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, something. But, uh, I mean, I'm doing it for him mostly. And the small block car was basically a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. and uh, we're going we're gonna to go see what we can do this year. Hit the Blue E, guys. That'll subscribe. Thanks for having me out. Good luck. I can't wait to see you guys at the track. Okay, thanks.